In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the second book of entry called Ledger. Let us start by understanding the need for this uh, second book of entry. In the previous section, we looked at 14 transactions. You learned how to write these transactions in the book of first entry, how to generalize these transactions. And then as a result, we had, uh, you know, we prepared a journal which looked like uh, this and you have the 14 transactions written uh, you know in a visible manner in a summary form you have it with you now after the 14 transactions the question you should really ask you know are the are as follows you would want to know what is the balance in the bank account there were 14 transactions and many of these transactions involved receiving money from people or paying uh, through the bank account to some people, some parties. So finally, what is the amount left in your bank account? Now you could argue that you could download your bank statement and look at what is the uh, latest balance in the bank account and the, the question is answered. You could do that very well. However, what are you going to do for the second question? How much is the total purchase during the period, during the period of 14 transactions, let us say. Now, are you going to bank and ask for a statement uh, and, you know, ask um, where did I pay for purchases? Well, you can't do that because bank does not record your purchases only. It gives you one consolidated statement. It is up to you to now segregate which ones were purchases, which were, were sales and so on. Also, some sales are some purchases will be cash purchases, other purchases will be credit purchases. In the you know, bank statement, you will only see money paid for cash purchases. So it's not possible to answer this question through a bank statement either. Therefore, you need to have your own system, your own passbook uh, for you know, bank account, for purchase account as well. In the passbook for purchase account, you are going to write all the transactions relating to purchase only. If you can do that, then you can answer the question as to what is the total purchase during the period or during these 14 transactions. Likewise, the next question, what is the total sale? What is the book value of a building? How much do you need to recover from the customers or you need to pay to the vendors? you create a separate passbook for each of these. So uh, this is the process that we are going to follow. Create a separate, and I use the word passbook just to you know, provide an analogy to you, uh, you know, like a bank passbook, a passbook for every uh, asset, liability, income and expense. Now understand that there can be 10 types of assets, 20 types of liabilities, incomes and expenses. So you will need to maintain many, many passbooks. But that is going to come handy you know, when, as we move forward, you will realize that. So right now, in, uh, in the 14 transactions uh, that we have, if I have to answer this you know, first question here, I could of course go to bank, but I could also look through my transactions. And if I look through the transactions, I would say, okay, which, which general entries involve payment through bank or receipts in the bank? So I have this 100, which is coming in. So plus 100, then plus 200, then this is a minus 50 uh, and so on. So I could go through 14 transactions. It's not difficult. I could just do it manually. This is 300 minus 50, 250 and so on. I could give you a number in you know, a few seconds. That's possible. But imagine an actual business. This is just simulation. In an actual business, depending upon what size of business you are running, how, how much geographically spread you are in terms of a business, the transactions could run into thousands. And transactions could run into you know, thousands per hour as well, right? So under those circumstances, how are you going to manually do this? These records may be spread across geographies as well. They will need to be brought into one place and then look through. Uh, so it's, it's not, uh, you, you don't want to do that manual process. Therefore, you want to have 
a passbook for every type of account. Uh, when I say passbook, I mean one dedicated uh, fair uh, homework book. Uh, going back to the uh, earlier example where we said journal was a rough notebook in which you wrote the you know classwork that you did uh, throughout uh, the day for different subjects for different courses. And when you go home, you have one notebook dedicated for one subject, mathematics, one notebook, and you write answers to all practice problems in that notebook. So that when the exams come and you have to uh, now, you know, prepare for the exam, you do not have to look through rough notebook and then flip pages back and forth. You have one notebook where all the math is available for you to study and revise and prepare for the exam. Likewise, we are going to bring all the transactions relating to one account at one place so that things become easier for us. All right, how do we do it? In order to do that, we have this format. This is the passbook. This is the fair you know, notebook, the homework book that you have with you in which you are going to write transactions relating to one type of account and this could be an asset account, uh, liability account, expense account or income account. So at the top you see account written, you could prefix to it uh, any name. It could be bank account, it could be purchase account, it could be rent account, you could name it anything. So any account can be prepared. Now the format of the account, it has two sides. You have uh, these two sides. Now this side is called a debit side. So let me write it here. This is debit side and this is credit side. And you know, the convention is that you have the debit side on the left always and credit side on the right hand side. So this is how it is always going to be presented. Uh, no matter where you look in the textbooks or online resources. So in this account on one side you have the column for date, particulars which means you know details and then an amount to be written and same three columns repeated on the other side. You will see in the textbooks that you know there is another column uh, you know here which is kind of a reference number, a ledger folio which you could uh, give in order to refer to you know which transaction uh, where in the journal was this transaction written again i do not intend to make you an accountant i'm going through you know very simple transactions i want you to go through the process of accounting cycle in a you know minimum viable way so that you learn this process and then you have an understanding of how these numbers are arrived at you know, if this course was meant for accountants, people who want to, you know, become finance, uh, you know, uh, expert in handling the books or writing the books of accounts, then it will have more depth. You know, that's what chartered accountants do or people who do, uh, you know, account masters in accounting, they do. But uh, the idea in this course is to take you through a very, you know, lean uh, sort of process of accounting cycle so that you at least are familiar with the process. In that spirit, I'm not including that, you know, one more column uh, here. Okay, so uh, you you have three columns, uh, same three columns on the both sides and you're going to write the journal entries uh, in this passbook and this is going to be maintained, this ledger account uh, or this account is going to be maintained for every item of asset, liability, income and expense. All right, so that is what a ledger account looks like. In the following videos, we are going to uh, go through the process of posting these transactions in the ledger. I'll see you in the next video.